Dios les bendiga, hermanos. Espero que todos estén bien esta mañana. Voy a cantar este canto para la honra y la gloria del Señor Jesucristo. peace of God will always be there with you wherever you find yourself at church God bless you and uh, I'm very happy that you're tuning in to uh, the sermon uh, like I always have said today is a very special day every day is a very special day regarding the circumstances that we face in our lives especially what's going on here in our in, uh, among our um, in our country uh, with all this protest and, and um, activities and what goes on so anyway uh, just continue praying for everything that's going on, church. Keep, keep everybody in your prayers. Uh, I'm very happy that, that uh, you're, um, you're tuning in today. I want to bring you a very um, special uh, sermon today. It has to do, it has to do with, uh, with our lives being, and uh, being about uh, the foundation of our lives being Christ, the rock. Jesus Christ being the foundation of our lives. He is the one that, that can make a difference in our lives. And uh, that's what the Bible teaches. But before I go on in, re in reading scripture in the book of uh, Luke chapter 7, uh, let, me, uh, let me pray. My Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, I pray that you be with us during the moments that we're going to be preaching. I'm going to be preaching this sermon to those who are listening to the church and others. Let it be a blessing to those that hear your word, my God. So continue being with us, my God. Continue taking care of us and continue just... Uh, helping us draw closer to you, my Lord Jesus. So take over this sermon, my God, and let it let just 
Let's just let the Holy Spirit take over, my Heavenly Father, and use me as an instrument to be able to bring your word to those that are listening so they can be blessed. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I wanted to bring you this uh, sermon in regards to, like I said, what's been happening in our country with all this protest and uh, and activities and chaos that's going on. Uh, we just got done with, uh, we're not got done, we're still going through the pandemic, the virus, and now our country's going through another situation, another chaos, and that is the protest. So much, so much is going on. And that's why we need God in our lives. That's why we need God in, in, among our, our, our country and our lives and our homes. And I mean, we just need God. We need to all God, give back to the Lord because God is the only one that can bring solution to all this chaos that has been happening in our lives. And uh, so I wanted to bring you uh, a sermon in regards to a story that we find in chapter 7. But before I get to the story uh, in chapter 6, and verse, starting with verse 46, it, it, those of you that have your Bibles, Luke, Luke 6, chapter 40, verse 46, it reads this way. It says, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? This is Jesus talking. He says, I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep, lays the foundation of solid rock. When the flood waters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it, it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without foundation. When the flood sweep down against the house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. Look at this. The Lord Jesus is speaking to the people that, that why do they call at that time? Why and today? Why do we call him, call him Lord when we don't do what he tells us to do? This country, like I always have said, has been built... In, in the principles of the word of God. And, and so far in the past, like I've said in my previous sermons, forgive me if I have to repeat myself again, we have left God out of the picture. Out of the house of God. I've said it before, this is the house of God. This planet is his house. It's a foundation built on Christ. We see that in scripture. And Christ here is telling the people that, that in the midst of chaos and trouble, and storms and hurricanes and disasters if your house and your life is not built on the foundation which is Jesus Christ is is going to perish there's not going to be no solution but if but if your life and your life your house your country your state is founded on the foundation of the rock which is Jesus Christ no matter what happens God is going to rebuild it again that is what the Bible teaches. That's what Jesus is saying to the people. So, yeah, we can call Jesus Lord. And we got to mean, mean that he is, he is our God. That he is our Savior. That Christ came and died for our sins and died on the cross and then resurrected. He is the foundation. He is the solution in our lives. And I'm bringing this sermon up because Sunday after Sunday, there's always something new under the sun, like Solomon says, in our country. Now we're facing protest. We're, we're, we're seeing riots. We're seeing the authorities equipping themselves to maintain order. We see people re rebelling. The melting pot, not just one, one race, the melting pot. Like I said before, this country was founded on a melting pot, different immigrants, and now they're all taking part. But I'm, I wanted to just let you know what the solution is to all this chaos. And that's why I wanted to read the Bible to you. In chapter 7, there's a story. If you read the first couple of verses, which is verses 1 through 9, you have the story here about, uh, about Jesus Come, coming back to, after he's talking to the, talk to the people about the foundation of the rock, him, the, him being the foundation in their lives, and he's being the rock in their lives. He moves on to another place called Capernaum. And then he meets and he hears about a highly valued slave, which you find in verse 3. And then a Roman officer. And then later on you hear about uh, some respected Jewish elders. So see how Jesus ends up reaching out to the Jews in the beginning. And the Bible says that the zone didn't accept him. And he got crucified. Here he's reaching out to the Gentiles, to the servant, to the Roman soldier. And, uh, and then here, you see in this story, he goes on and says that the Roman soldier sends a delegation 
of Jewish elders to plead Jesus to come to, to, to just sir, uh, heal his servant because he loved them very much. And then Jesus says, okay, I'll go. But the Jewish elder, elder says, you know what? You should help him out because after all, he's been so kind to us. He even built a synagogue for us. So he deserves to be helped. Yet yeah, Jews didn't even believe in Jesus. They didn't even ask for him, for his, for his, uh, for him being their savior. Instead, they were asking for the centurion. And then, of course, Jesus says, okay, I'll go over there to his house. The centurion send, sends another delegation of helpers and tells him, you know what? Tell Jesus that he, I'm not worthy for him to come to my house. All he's got to do is say, say the word and my servant will be healed. That's all he's got to do is say it. Because I'm a man under authority and if I tell a servant to do this and he'll do it. If I tell a soldier to do this, he'll do it. I know because I'm a man of authority. Jesus, all he's got to do is just say it and it will be done. And Jesus was amazed. And verse 9, he says, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in Israel. And why am I telling you this story? Because he deals with a centurion. A centurion was a commander that, that had a, that, that had a, a, a group of a hundred soldiers under his authority. And he loved to serve him very much. He could give orders and, and the orders would be carried out. But you notice something different about this centurion here. You notice that he was humble. He knew Jesus. He had, he had faith in Jesus. He respected Jesus. He asked Jesus to help him, to help his ser uh, servant. And uh, he was so humble. He had a different heart. And Jesus was so amazed at this centurion. Hoping that and praying that Jesus could feel the same way about us. Can recognize deep down in our hearts how we love him. How we have faith in him. How he can be able to help us when we have a need. It could be for us. It could be for a family member. It could be for a friend. It could be anybody. And yet he can help us. We don't have to send a delegation. All we got to do is just pray. And feel that Jesus knows our heart. And he'll say, you know what? I'll never, never have seen so much faith on that brother, on that sister. So yeah, your, your, your servant will be healed. You will be healed. A humble heart. And that's important in the midst of this chaos. We need commanders. We need captains. Not that they're not out there, but in case they're not. To be humble to God. To praise God. To ask God for help in their situation. To know how to... How to send a delegation of troops to deal with the masses, with the, with the protesters. So everything can be under the control of that rock, that foundation, which is Jesus Christ. We can bring peace and tranquility. Notice you find that in Job. In Job, Eli, 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 Job's friend, Eliphaz, Eli, Eli he talked to Job. And he says in verse 8 and verse, uh, verse, verse 6, he says, But evil does not spring from the soil, and troubles do not sprout from the earth. And verse 7, people are born for trouble. As readily, as readily as sparks fly up from a fire. Now listen, verse 8. And this is what the Bible is telling all those leaders to do. And his friend is telling Job, If I were you, I would go to God and present my case to him. And that's why I want to bring you the sermon. That the only solution to this problem and this chaos that's going on is God. Under the courts of God. But you need humble servants. You need humble, humble, not servants, not just servants, but, but leaders under authority that can be able to, to, to have that faith in Christ and, and be humble to Christ and say, Lord, all you got to do is say this and it will be done. I have troops that I can send under my authority, but I want to do it with your guidance. And I know when I do it under your, your, your guidance and, my, and, and your advice, Everything will be done. It will be good. Because after all, people, not everybody, not all the people. But here, Elahu is generalizing all the people because we're all sinners and come short of the glory of God. We're all born to be cause trouble. Because we have a free will to choose. But God gave us a free will to choose, to choose Him. To choose order. But when you don't have Christ in your life, you're going to cause trouble. You're going to cause problems. And, uh, and, and so that's what's been happening today. But not everybody is like that. There's some people that, are, that, are, that, have, carried, that have protested in, in orderly. And that's good. That's what's needed to bring solution to all this. Because you see God in that picture. Peace and tranquility. So 
Here, the, the soldier, the Roman soldier is, is a person that is so humble to God and so respectful to God. Now let me, let me tell you the difference of another general. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but you find it in, in chapter, chapter 5. A general called Naaman. A Naaman was a, was a Gentile. This, this, this uh, general ended up getting, uh, getting leprosy at that time. 2 Kings chapter 5. He had leprosy. And he was advised to go seek the prophet of God. His name was Elisha. He says he will heal you. How many people have said go to that church. Go to the brother. Go to the sister. They have the power of prayer. They will pray for you. You'll be healed. Church. Do you have the power? You have the power of prayer. Whoever God sends you. Don't turn them away. Pray for them. And, the, and, the, and Naaman went up to. To, uh, to this house of the, the prophet. And the prophet didn't even meet him. He just sent his servant. And Elisha sent his servant. And to tell the general. You know what? And the general with all these troops behind him. He says just go tell him to dip himself seven times in the Jordan River. And he will be cleansed. And why am I telling you this story? Because the difference between the centurion in chapter 7 of Luke. With his humble heart and faith in God. Compared to Naaman here. That we read. In, in verse 11, it says, in chapter 5, 2 Kings, it says, But Naaman became angry and, and stalked away. And he says, I thought, he says, quote, I thought he would certainly come out, name the Lord his God, and heal me. Look at that. Naaman came here for help, pleading for Elisha's God to heal him. How many people have said, I want you to pray to your God? Just like the Jewish leaders came to, to ask Jesus to, to help the centurion. After all, he built a synagogue for us. After all, he's, he has been so kind to, to everybody. Help him out. But yet they didn't ask Jesus to be part of their lives. Because the Jews didn't believe in Jesus. They crucified him. The Jewish leaders in the synagogues. And here they have Naaman upset. And yet he has the he has the, the courage to say, he says name he says and call on the name of the Lord his God, instead of saying you know I want him to be my God I need help I got leprosy I want him to be my God he says no I want you to preach to your God I don't want your God I want your I don't want your God I want your God to heal heal me how many people are like that in life I don't want your God but I want your God to heal me to help me the difference in the midst of this protest. Just don't ask, help your, ask your God. No, say, my God is going to help you. My God is going to help me carry orders. And, and, and what, what happened with this general is that, yes, you read later on in the story, he got healed. He did. They, they advised him, what, what's it going to hurt? Go dip yourself in the river, even though it's dirty, because he didn't want to. He's a general. He says, there's better rivers out there that are cleaner. Why am I going to go in that deep, dirty river? And they advised him what you got to lose. And he did. And his skin became so soft and used like a baby. The God of Elisha, not his God. God ended up healing him. The difference about this general. And that's what's needed today as a centurion. Humble to God. And what else? We see in, in, uh, in, second, in second Chronicles. Another story. I'm not going to read it to you. But you can read it in chapter 10, Second Chronicles. But another king that took over the reign, leading the people of Israel, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, Second Chronicles 1 through 12. He took over the kingdom, a young king. And this, the story goes about this young king, and as he ended up, the people of Israel, they all came to him and they said, Hey, since you're going to be a new king, a new king, can, can you be nice? Gentle with us and don't be so strong like your father was with us, Solomon. He was he was tough with us. Can you be so soft with us? Can you just kind of cut some slack for us? That's what the people of Israel were asking this king, this leader. So he says, you know, come back, people of Israel, come back and I'll give you my answer in three days. They and in the meantime, the king ended up calling the elders to ask them what they what, he, what they advised advised him to do. And those leaders were were actually the ones that had advised Solomon. And they told him, you know what? Yes, true. Your, your, your father was hard. So why don't you just be softer with these people? And they will serve you. 
I said, okay, all right then. So then he called, then the king called his college buddies. That is his own age, his young guy, his young friends. And he consulted with them and says, what do you, what do you advise me to do? And you know what his friend says? You know what? You tell those people that if they don't obey you, if Solomon was hard, you're going to be harder. And yeah, they came, the people of Israel came back the third day for their answer, and he told them, I'll tell you one thing, if my father was hard, you better obey, because I'm going to be tough with you. Bad advice that the king got. And the people of Israel revolted against the king, and the tribe of Israel was divided into two. Became Israel and Judah. Division came about. Why? Because bad advice. We pray for these leaders that are in the midst of this chaos, these riots, to seek good advice, godly advice. Like Saul, like, like, like Luke told Job in the, under the courts of, of God. Let God take care of it. Seek God to help. Uh, that be the, that's the best advice. Is to be humble to God and say, Lord, we got to, you help us out with this situation. Because notice the friends of, of the king, the young college buddies. They were not soft hearted. What's been happening here in these riots? The melting pot, I said in one of my sermons before, it's not just one race, this protest is a melting pot. They're, they're, they're not, they're like the friends, they're revolting. It's like, it's like Elijah, Elijah said, man was born for trouble, to cause trouble. Not that, that, that everybody's causing trouble, there's peaceful, peaceful protesters, yes, God bless them. You see God's in their midst. But at the same time, what happens here is that man has the free will to choose. But when you don't choose God, you're going to be revolting against the system, especially when you're deprived of opportunities. That's why I said it in my sermons before, those in authority line up policies that are going to be fair for everybody. Like the elders of, uh, that had advised Solomon and told the king, be fair with them, help them out. Don't be hard with them. But when you're tough with the people, when you deprive the people, they're going to, they're, they're going to revolt and chaos is going to take place. Now, a crime had been had has been committed. That's why chaos came about in our country. I mean, that's nothing new under the sun. We saw that with with Moses. Moses took the life of, a, of an Egyptian. I mean, of a, yeah, the Egyptian. He 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 had to flee, fled, but God used him tremendously. And then you have the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul ended up persecuting the church. He witnessed the stoning of Stephen, a man full of the Holy Spirit. And yet the Lord used the Apostle Paul tremendously in, reading, in writing the Gospels that we're reading in the New Testament. My God, how God can turn something bad into something good in the midst of this chaos. We pray for both sides, for the Lord to bring good and good go both sides and to all come to the feet of Christ. Because Christ is the solution. Christ is the only one that can bring peace. Now in Job, we don't know. We, we know now what, what had been happening with Job. Job has, you know the story, those of you that have the Bible. Job was suffering so much, evil was attacking Job. He got sick. Job didn't even know what was going on. He said, what's happening here? I'm doing, I'm a good man. I do everything. I do everything good. I don't curse God. I don't blaspheme, blaspheme God. And yet I, I'm full of boils. I'm sick. What is happening? He didn't know what was going on. Yet we do know what was going on. Evil was attacking him. Do we want to know what's happening here in our country? Evil is attacking us. Why? Because we have let God out of the picture. I said in one of my sermons, this is a house. This planet is a house of God. And Jesus is saying right here, he's the foundation. He's the rock of this planet. And, uh, and he is needed to bring peace and tranquility. Now, some of you might say that are listening to me. Some of you might say, you know what? I don't need God in my life. What is, what is this preacher talking about? Everything's going fine with me. I, 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 I'm, 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 I have, I'm full of prosperity. I live in mansions. I have good companies. I'm very successful. I don't need God. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm not causing trouble. Yes. God bless you. All that came from God and gave you the strength. It all came from God because we're all made in his own image. But one thing you've, I've always have said in my sermons. That Jesus is coming back soon. But what happens if you go before Jesus comes back? What happens? Before Jesus comes back, you ain't going to take nothing with you. The Bible says that every knee will bow down to Jesus. 
So that's why you need Christ in your life. Why not have both? I always have said to have both prosperity and, and everything else. Because it all comes from God. But have Jesus as a foundation in your life. And here I'm talking not just to the church. Church, forgive me for, for getting away from uh, way beyond the church. But here I'm talking to Gentiles in general. For, for any race here, you're talking here. Jesus is reaching out to the to the servant. He's reaching out to the centurion, and later on, he reaches out to others, like he reached out to us Gentiles, not just the Jews. Jesus was is reaching out to everyone that is listening to me in this English sermon. No matter what race you are, no matter what ethnic background you are, Jesus died for your sins. Christ, you might not believe in Jesus, but you're going to bow down and knee to Jesus. And God made you intelligent, made you smart. He didn't make you dumb. And you have that's why you've been successful. All that is coming from God. So whatever in the background you belong to, or you're listening to me, don't get offended by me talking to you. If you by any chance listening and don't turn it off. Because Jesus is having you tune in for a reason because he's reaching out to you telling you that he loves you that he cares for you just like he reached out for the centurion all you got to build up that faith that the centurion had and what's been happening here in the midst of chaos reaching out to the kids that's what we pray for reaching out to to the to the family members on both sides so god can bring peace and bring something good out of it and learn from it and create new policies that can better everybody not just a few so no so i don't know i said it before uh in this sermons if you have been watching me i said let's pray because i don't know what's going to happen next i, I started out with a pandemic now we're in a riot what's going to happen next that's what we got to pray leaders president senators congressmen seek good advice seek godly advice Humble yourself to God like the centurion says. I, Jesus said, I never have witnessed so much faith in Israel. I never have witnessed so much faith in the United States. Like these leaders that I see seeking out for my help and under my courts. And you'd be surprised. This is not a fairy tale. We don't see the supernatural, but it's there. God told Moses when Moses wanted to see him in the mountain. When he saw the burning bush. God says, you can't see me and live. But when we away from this body and present with the Lord, like the, the Second Corinthians five eight says, the Apostle Paul says, away from the body and be with the Lord. But then we're going to see God. Then we're going to say, oh my goodness, look at this, because the Apostle Paul says that that right now we see things like in like in a, 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 a like in a, you know, mirror that is not clear, a foggy mirror. But later on, we're going to see. Everything crystal clear in a mirror that we're going to see everything that God had been told us, talking to us in the scriptures. So yeah, and, and 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 God can be understood under analogies, human analogies. Jesus spoke in parables. Hosea spoke in similitudes. John spoke in symbols. He spoke in dreams. He spoke in visions. I mean, God can be able to speak to individuals however He wants to please. As long as we have the discernment to understand what he's talking about. So let me give you an analogy. Those of you that says I don't need God. But one day you're going, your body's going to depart from here. Where is it going to go? With God? Or away from God? Now it's, it's, it's no coincidence that, that last, last week uh, in, in this country. Uh, we witnessed uh, 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 a rocket go up into space and take two astronauts. Something that hadn't been seen way back since a long time ago. And, and man was able to put uh, two men in a rocket and have him be up there in the, in the station, the space station, with other astronauts that had been waiting up there. How simple man can do it. Sure, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, uh, they, they didn't try the first time, but the second time when they did it, yeah, it happened. Now, if man can be able to take a man from here into space, just like back in the 69, I believe. When the man landed on the moon with man's intelligence, with the vision of John Kennedy, it happened. If man could be able to take man up there, how much God can be able to take this body away from the body and be with God? This is just an analogy. It happens. It's going to happen. So Christ is the answer. Christ is the foundation. 
in our lives. And Christ is the answer to all this what's been happening in our country. Jesus said it here. If your foundation, if this country is not founded on, 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 is not built on a rock, which is me, winds are going to come, storms are going to show up, and everything's going to crumble. Yeah. Jesus wants to be our foundation in our lives, in your home. He wants to be the foundation in your home. If those of you that listen to me, if you don't have Christ, have him be the foundation in your home. First, have him be in your life. Have it be the rock in your life. Because like I said, here you have these this kids revolting and protesting and breaking and breaking things, going into businesses. I mean, chaos. Job says they were born for trouble. The youth of today is different. So I'm, I'm telling the college kids, college kids with, with intelligence, like I'm telling the leaders, seek good advice. Don't 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 go and seek bad advice like like this king did with his but his buddies, with his college buddies, with his drinking buddies, and people revolted against him. So yeah, you want to have your home in Christ being the rock, Christ being the foundation. And here, just to finish it in verse forty six in chapter six in the book of Luke, he says, Jesus says, Why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? You can't, you can't live a super, superficial life. You've got to be real with God. You just can't say, well, I believe in God and, and don't, do, don't do what God tells you. You've got to do it. You've got to have God in your life, in, in your home. You have, you have to have Jesus in your life. So, yeah, just you see the difference here between this man and authority. One has so much faith in Christ. I say, you know what? I'm not worthy for you to come to my home. Just say the word at a distance. And my servant will be healed. How much can, be able to, can we be able to pray at a distance for others? Like I'm praying for you at a distance. In this, in this video you, you're seeing me. I'm praying for you. I don't know where you're at. I'm praying at a distance for God to take care of you. How many of you are praying for me at a distance? So God can help me. And help others too. At a distance. Just say it at a distance and you don't have to come to my house. You wouldn't have to be present in this in the midst of this pandemic. Look at the Lord. What, what, I mean, look what happened. We're separated from one another. Now it's starting to get back to normal, I think. But we'll, we'll just see what happens later. So apart from, from each other, we were able to pray for each other at a distance. Just like Jesus did with the centurion. Or you can be able to, to be like that, like Naaman. Angry and say, you know what? I need help, but your God can help me. Look at that. How disrespectful to God. Our God can help anybody. Our God was the God of Naaman too. But yet Naaman didn't recognize it because of his heart. He got angry instead. And then you have this king seeking bad advice. So I pray that in the midst of chaos that's been happening here, I pray that all of us seek good advice and all of us be humble to God. And all of us go to the court of God in prayer and say, God, we pray on the highest throne of authority where you recite to not just look over, over our lives, to look over our homes, over our community, over our cities, over our state, over our country. And yes, we pray for our president to seek good advice from good people that know about God, that fear God, so they can bring solution to all this. And also the, the governors too. Everybody. Seek good advice. Godly advice. So they can bring. So God can. So you can bring peace and tranquility. Oh my Lord Jesus. First Timothy 2 8 says. In one something that something that I witnessed in the, in the, in the protest. Everybody raising their hands. And it reminds me of Second Timothy, First Timothy two eight, where he says, "Every in every place of worship, the apostle Paul says, I want men to pray with holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger and controversy." That's what's needed. Pray to the Lord with arms up, free from anger and controversy, so God can be able to bring His peace and tranquility in our lives, in our community, in our cities. And then all this chaos. So I, so I just wanted to bring you this sermon. Give you the difference between the authorities that exist 
And I pray that everybody follow God and ask God for help. So now, church, let me have this opportunity to just give everyone the plan of salvation. No matter who you are. No matter. Forgive me. I'm just a pastor behind this pulpit. Please don't turn me out. Please. If you help me instead. Don't get offended by this. This is God's word. Technology God has provided man with to bring these services to you. To this ministry. So I pray. And I that, that those of you that are that are um, uh, listening to me, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the day of salvation is today, not tomorrow. Today. Tomorrow you might go with God. Just astronauts went up to space. You might wind up with God up there. But you want to bow down to God? If you have Christ, you don't have to worry about it. If you don't, then, then you're going to be away from it for eternity. So the day of salvation is today. If you believe in Romans 10, 9 says, and I always said it, that if you believe that Jesus is God, there's nothing wrong with that. What have you got to lose? He's not going to hurt you. Assure your salvation, no matter what ethnic background you are, no matter what belief you have. You were created in God's image. And I don't want to start naming every particular race. I don't want to. But Christ died for your sins. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16 and 17 says, God did not come to condemn the world. He didn't come to condemn you for other beliefs like Naaman here. He, he came to, to, to save you. So pray this prayer. Pray with me this prayer. And repeat this, if you want to accept Christ, your Lord and Savior, and I pray that you do it today. Just close your eyes and pray this. And just so he can be able to make things better in our lives. So I wanted to just give you that plan of salvation. I just wanted to add more to it. But if you really believe that Christ is God and believe that the Father is him from the dead, you will be saved. Now I pray that as you made that commitment for Christ in your life, I pray that others come into your home, into your life, over wherever you're at, and talk to you about Jesus. Continue talk to you, talking to you about Jesus. Because that's my prayer to you. So thank you. God bless you. God bless you, church. And I just pray that you continue praying for me, praying for everybody, praying for our country, and praying like I'm praying for your families. So let's pray. My Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, you just, I just ended up presenting your word to the listeners, my Heavenly Father. And I just pray, my God, that it would be a blessing to them. All I did is bring your word to them, my Heavenly Father, from the scripture. It's not my doing, it's yours. Stories from the Bible that, are, that, became, that were reality back then and reality today. And I just wanted to bring some answers to this chaos that we're facing in our lives in this country, Heavenly Father. And also at the same time, present those that are listening from wherever they find themselves at. Uh, about finding Jesus in their lives because they need Christ in their lives so they can have a new beginning in life. So I just want to thank you for your word. I thank you for the listeners and I just thank you for the opportunity and continue loving us and be with the authorities, be with the, be with the protesters and be with the parents because I know they're worried about their kids, everybody, families worry about the authorities. Just bring peace, Heavenly Father. And just like we see the Jewish elders coming to Jesus to seek help for the centurion. We pray for the church. We pray for those pastors, those leaders. Continue seeking Jesus' help for the, for the protesters and for the authorities. Just like I did through the word of God. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. God bless you.